Good evening, everyone. I request you all to keep your videos on. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Please keep your videos on. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the webinar on relationship. Uh, so my name is Ranjima Ravindran. Uh, I'm currently pursuing my master's in psychology from uh, JN University, Bangalore. I am uh, also a mental health volunteer at Indian Counseling Services. So uh, ICS uh, is a successfully running organization since the past five years. There are uh, majorly two departments in ICS. First one uh, provides the one-to-one -one counseling services and the next, second one provides training and uh, internship programs. ICS uh, is also one of the largest network of counselors and psychologists and also a member of the International Applied Psychology Association. I'll share my screen now. I hope you all can see my screen. So once again, uh, welcome to ICS. So today we'll be having a relationship webinar. Uh, the certificate uh, will be provided uh, once the webinar is over. Uh, you'll, you'll get a procedure via the chat box, email or WhatsApp. So once you complete the procedure, you will be receiving the certificate. Everyone, please mute yourself. Okay, uh, thank you for joining ICS. This training gives you an opportunity through which you, can, which you can look at the big and small aspects of people around you, having any kind of mental or emotional support at the level of intelligence or prudence through the various uh, training and practical programs. We hope you get the most out of this training. Now, uh, if you're on social media, please do uh, follow our accounts. Uh, we are on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. So uh, if you have any uh, kind of queries or doubts, uh, please feel, uh, feel free to mail us. Our mail ID is given below. We uh, at ICS, we have a different uh, internship and courses. So if you're interested, online counseling psychology course is coming up. So if any of you is interested, you can uh, always you know, uh, apply for it. So uh, Ms. Sonali Grover, she is uh, the speaker today. She is an uh, RCI licensed clinical psychologist. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. So good evening, everyone. Requesting all of you to please put on your videos. So that we can make the most out of this session. Quickly. And it's better to connect and have a two-way conversation than just having one speaker just speaking and you know that will be boring. So let's have a one-to-one -one connect connection. Requesting everyone to please put on your videos. I don't want to name anyone. Quickly do that. Thank you. So please do. Rest of you also please put on your videos. That's okay, even if we are not, uh, you know, very well dressed or we are somewhere out. That's okay. We understand. We all understand. 
Connecting online helps us to connect from anywhere. So definitely we can do that. Right? All right. So today's topic is relationship issues counseling. Can anyone tell what is relationship issues counseling? Any idea or any guess what it could be as the name suggests? I want everyone to speak up. I don't want to, you know, conduct a session where only I'm speaking or only one person is speaking. It what do you understand? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, um, many people face relationship issues in their peak, uh, peak years like career. Uh, so they should deal with uh, a proper counseling for that so they uh, so they can be a particular uh, focus on their career okay okay all right so you understand relationship counseling as this anyone else has a different different opinion about what relationship counseling can be or what it can look like can i or any guess Yes, yes, please, please do unmute and speak up. Um, the relationship counseling can be of any kind of relationship between my parents and children, husband and wife, any kind of relation because they all have, um, you can't exactly, sometimes you become too uh, subjective and it's very difficult to become objective. So you need a third party to kind of uh, clear things out for you. That's what I take as relationship counseling okay all right all right thank you for sharing yes next can i yes please uh ma'am i think relationship issues when the relationship mein trust issue hone lage hmm. jab trust issues honge hum ek dusre ke upar trust nahi karenge hmm. to i think ye issues tab hote hain aur kisi bhi relationship mein counseling ki zarurat tabhi padti hai jab hum ek dusre ke upar trust nahi karte hain doubt karte hain uh okay. ya hum ek dusre ko time nahi de pate Okay. I think in any relationship, time is very important. Yes. I yes. thought uh, maybe this You are right. Anyone and as they else? say that, yeah, yes. as they say yes. that uh, male and female language is different. So it's hmm. really difficult to understand the other person's uh, point of perspective, view. Perspective, yes. Yeah, perspective. Uh, okay. yes. Ma'am, so relationship uh, counseling, we explore karte hain. अगर कोई रिलेशनशिप से रिलेटेड इशू है जैसे कि मदर चाइल्ड का है या सिबलिंग का है या फिर मैराइटल कोई कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है तो वहां पर हम लोग जहां कम्युनिकेशन पे वर्क किया जाता है और जो इंटरेक्शन है उस पे इंप्रूव करने की कोशिश की जाती है और उनके कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को रिजॉल्व जो है उसको करने की कोशिश की जाती है रिलेशनशिप काउंसलिंग में राइट मैम that yes absolutely so i think uh, सबको रफ आईडिया है व्हाट रिलेशनशिप काउंसलिंग इज लाइक you know i think you all have a base about what relationship counseling can look like or what what do relationship counselors do so today we'll be covering up this content what is a healthy relationship what are the stages of a relationship what are the different kinds of relationship counseling so these are just a few examples like attachment issues jahan pe hote hain then domestic abuse counseling family conflict counseling relationship breakup separation then what are the tips for you know a healthier relationship so just look at this picture and can you answer what is the picture depicting here love okay anything else love Trust. absolutely right yeah. just showing Trust. healthy relationship helping relationship yes what kind of relationship does it looks like to you together and also uh, like a healthy relationship yeah they are uh, so when, they are enjoying so when, each other's company yeah so there are two two kinds of pictures so can you guess what's the right one where the sun is there uh, which one is it like what what kind of a relationship is it 
Like with whom? Can you guess? Father, daughter. Father, daughter, yes. So one picture is father, daughter, and, and the other, other one, one is, is I think having old couples. older person. Old, yes, ah, old couple. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you know, whenever I show this picture to different people, they have their different perceptions about it. What maybe for some it's a father, daughter, for some it's a husband, wife. So they all, you know, treat it as a different, maybe uh uh, maybe granddaughter and a grand, uh, you know, and a uh, grand uh, granddaughter and a uh, grandfathers, you know, that kind of a relationship. Or some people treat it as the old couple. You guessed it right. Even I had a perception, but when I showed it to some people, so they uh, even guessed it that uh, you know, it's it's with a young couple wearing mask and you know everything. So that's the new normal kind of a picture. So. You know, so they do not look old. So everyone has their different perception. But yes, what's the common thing here? That they all share some sort of a relationship with each other. Whether be it any kind of relationship. And they all have the love in common. Because that's depi also depicted by the hearts that show. Yeah. And in any relationship, definitely, if there is love, trust, harmonious relationship, as you all said, then only it will succeed. So, right now we were discussing about are you in a healthy relationship? So, what do you mean by a healthy relationship? What do you think could be a healthy relationship between anyone? It could be between couples, it could be between parent-child relationship, it could be between uh, husband or wife, husband-wife, it could be between, uh, you know, a normal couple with who's not married yet, maybe who's about to get married or anyone for that matter. So, what are the healthy boundaries? Boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, it could be anything. So, what do you think? is a healthy you know relationship definition of a healthy relationship i think understanding understanding i think support uh compatibility understanding. better understanding hmm. okay trust trust. Proper, uh, trust or proper communication means direct communication they have hmm. okay where are your videos i can't see you all quickly put them on very bad very bad i am not liking it quickly put on your videos see we are having such a nice connection and you know we're ha we are having such a good conversation let's do it with our videos on yes yes sir you were speaking something sorry to stop you in between ma'am in my thinking there are the three rules love care and expression which will say healthy relationship. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now I think all of you, all of you are having a sheet of paper with you. I've just shared a screen wherein I'm giving you quickly two minutes to write. List out five things you look for in any relationship. It could be any relationship. I'm not saying it should be boyfriend, girlfriend. It should be a couple relationship. It could be any relationship. So five things you look out and then we'll discuss. Giving you two minutes of time. Quickly do it. For those who are done, just raise your hand once you're done. Ma'am, can you please repeat what you say? Right now, this is the activity that I want you all to do. It's right there shared on the screen also. List out five things you look for in any relationship. That you look forward to or you look for or you, know, you think that that's important in any relationship. Five things. Once you are done, please keep do keep raising your hands so that I know how many of you are able to follow through. If you have any doubt in this, please ask. You in a if you want me to repeat, I can do that. It's a very, very simple activity. Very simple activity.
Waiting for more raised hands so that we can proceed further for discussion. I don't want you all to steal the ideas of those who've done, no? So that's why I'm waiting. Okay, so I think some of you have raised your hands and some of you are still writing. So for those who have done, would you, who wants to go first in sharing? What are the five things they have written? I can see Tanya uh, shared. Yes, I have shared my screen. Yeah, it's understanding, support, compatibility, trust and, and respect. respect. Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing. That's your opinion about things that you like yes. in a relationship. Yes. 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 Anyone else? Yes. Yes. You can speak up. That's okay. You do not have to show it to me. You can speak up. What are the five essential things that you've written in any relationship that should be there? It's a, it's a personal enough. choice. No, somebody's preference that. is something and somebody's preference is not. It's something else. So it's a personal choice. Yes. I could hear somebody speaking. Uh, trust, care and love. No communication gap. Mm -hmm. Respect each other's feeling and emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding their uh, work and priority and uh, responsibilities also. Very good. Very good. That's true. Next, ma'am, trust, love, uh, respect, harmony, and confidence and caring. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing, sir. Uh, communication, compa uh, sorry, communication, trust, space, understanding, and uh, giving time to the other person. Okay, that's great. Next, uh, better understanding, good communication, quality time, respect, trust. So I think trust though is the common thing and understanding. So sabne likhi hai wo to, hai na? Uske lava anybody wants to share trust or understanding ke lava anybody wants to share their five points. Now, anything different that you've written should be there in any relationship. Ma'am, good intentions towards each other. Mm -hmm. True. Good intentions, yes. And giving their personal space whenever they require. Mm -hmm. So having personal boundaries is very important. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else? I think this are you your hands raised. Dikhre. Nobody is speaking up. Respect Gratitude, ma'am. Gratitude, yes. I was actually uh, waiting for somebody to say this because that's, I think, the most, most, most important thing. Until unless we have gratitude in any relationship, we will not be able to respect or understand or time, give time and, you know, have boundaries. Nothing can be there until unless we, we have gratitude. Do you all agree with me? At some point or the other, I'm sure you all must have expressed gratitude in any relationship that you have been, to, right? No? Yeah. Okay, anything else? Anything else? Uh, that, any different? Mutual, yes, sir. Mutual understanding. Mutual understanding, yes. Transparency. Definitely. Transparency, absolutely. Honesty also. Yes. Yes. Self love and self care as well. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else? Thank you, sir, for sharing. Pleasure. Hello, Mom. Uh, love, good understanding, happiness. Mm -hmm. Then uh, helping each other for hmm. good communication. Hmm. Okay, good. So helping each other means? 
helping each other means uh, that's mean uh, brother and sister uh, helping each other okay. yeah <laughs> that's great i just wanted to know what context you mean uh, okay great it can be in any relationship even helping your uh, mother with anything or helping your father with anything or it could be brother sister as you said anything in any relationship so it's a give and take relationship huh Anyone else who would want to share before we proceed? Okay, all right. So I think most of you are done and those who wanted to share. So how did you feel about this when you gave it a thought that about, okay, five things, was it difficult or was it very easy to list down on things that you look for in a relationship? And how satisfied do you feel? What's your reflection on it? Ma'am, every day we come to a lesson, so it's natural that we need to do this. So do you, uh, so uh, do you feel that these things are not able to get out of the way? Or do you think that these things are not able to get out of the way? Conflicts arise, do you think? Yes, ma'am. And uh, जब आपने ये activity करी तो how did you feel about it? Did you मतलब in your day to day life do you think about these things कि ये सब चीजें मुझे चाहिए और they are natural coming, naturally आ जाती हैं? मैं कुछ कुछ तो naturally आ जाती हैं कुछ को करना पड़ता है करना पड़ेगा practically ध्यान नहीं जाता है उस समय focus that's why that's why this is the very initial me he i wanted you all to actually think and reflect what all are we expecting in any relationship what are the things that because we often are busy in our day-to-day -day lives and we do not realize what we actually want from any relationship so right now we're all saying understanding helping each other respect you know these trust all these big big words but then when when it comes to actual reality we tend to forget and then we tend to live in a normal uh running fast-paced world wherein we forget all these things so this was just a reflection activity to make you all realize that okay these are the things that are important for us and we should abide by them so now that you know that okay these are the things that i also have to take care so then there will be less chances of conflicts arising and there will be more understanding in any relationship Okay, I can see a lot of things written in the chat box as well. Thank you for sharing those who did not, you know, speak up and share. Thank you. I've read them. Great. So, respect for privacy and space. You do not have to be with your partner 24-7. Your partner encourages you to spend time with friends without them and participate in activities that you enjoy. So these are all a few things that I thought are important in any healthy relationship. You feel comfortable expressing your opinions, concerns to your partner. You feel physically safe. Your partner respects your wishes and feelings and you can compromise, negotiate when there are disagreements or conflicts. So what is the foundation of a healthy relationship? Trust, boundaries, communication consent that's also a very essential aspect that i think we all missed out when we were discussing so there are different stages of relationships first one is acquaintance just think of any new relationship starting relationship starts with mutual attraction it then builds up Couple engages in self-disclosure and becoming increasingly independent, interdependent on each other. Then there is continuation. Couple lives and becomes enmeshed and the relationship becomes consolidated. Then deterioration. Relationship may deteriorate due to an imbalance of cost and rewards or high number of risk factors. Maybe it's something that's are not working out. And then it's the last stage of ending. Deterioration may lead the couple to end the relationship. So this is a broad uh, aspect. So this is one theory, the George Levinger's theory on relationship stages. First one is the attraction. 
like we discussed relationship necessarily begins with contact between two individuals which is usually based on physical appearance or psychological similarities second one is build up the build up stage of a relationship is when the two partners become intimate gradually trust each other and become increasingly interdependent third stage continuation long term commitment by the union of lives by the two members of couple common law partners or marriages are included in this stage wherein you know they want they feel that they are ready for continuing the relationship so here the mutual trust is the fundamental factor deterioration so next stage this stage of love stage relationship does not always occur it's not necess necessary that the relationship with de deteriorate or decline it is associated with factors such as imbalance between the rewards obtained from continuing in the relationship and cost of doing so which in turn clashes with difficulty of breaking up increased by the fact of having children together sharing a house etc last stage is termination which is the ending stage this is not necessarily related to a breakup it can also be due to the death of one of the members of the relationship or many other factors that could lead to termination of any relationship so as we discussed before there are different kinds of relationship counseling so the first one i wanted to discuss was attachment issues counseling so as you can see on the screen can anyone tell me what is attachment issues what are attachment issues i've just shared so i'm sure you must have had the glance quickly unmute and speak up what do you think are attachment issues too much possessive okay too much possessive yes lack of trust lack of trust anyone else who would want to share hmm what what do you think attachment is uh connection attachment means jab hum connection ki baat kar rahe hain relationship ke connection attachment bonding ho jahan par aur usi mein struggle ho raha jo connection ke kisi dusre jab jis person se hamara connection hai wahan par meaningful attachment banane mein struggle hona ya um एक उसको हम क्या कहते हैं वो वर्ड नहीं आ रहा मुझे ओके सो हाउ रिलेशनशिप जैसे फंक्शन करने चाहिए वैसे नहीं हो पा रहे सो दैट्स दैट्स आल्सो अ कॉमन कंसर्न कि अटैचमेंट जब इश्यूज जो आते हैं उससे रिलेटेड दिस इज व्हाट यू मीन ओके सो यू कैन थिंक अगर फिर बाद में याद आ जाए सो यू कैन लेट मी नो ठीक है so attachment is a way that we form our first bonds with our primary caregivers like it could be our parents or anyone who is raised up and profoundly influences the way we make connections in subsequent relationships so the relationship you have with your primary caregivers is the founding part wherein you you know that's how you make connections with other relations ठीक है दिस फर्स्ट रिलेशनशिप इनस्टिल इन अस अ सेंस ऑफ हाउ रिलेशनशिप्स आर सपोज टू फंक्शन एंड हाउ डू आर दे सपोज टू फील सो अटैचमेंट थेरेपी इज अ वेरी कॉमन थेरेपी वेयर इन यू नो व्हाई वेयर व्हाट आर द कॉमन सिम्टम्स दैट यू ऑब्जर्व दैट ओके दैट यू नो वी कैन यूज स्ट्रगल टू मेक मीनिंगफुल कनेक्शंस विद अदर्स मे बी यू आर नॉट एबल टू सोशलाइज फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू बी मोर बी इमोशनली वल्नरेबल often re relationships prematurely due to fear maybe fear of commitment could be there worry about abandonment in your relationships worry about your partner who doesn't loves you despite all their words actions find yourself in a serial dater because you are afraid to be alone feel dis uh, distraught in a relationship especially as they become more intimate have poor self esteem so these are the common symptoms that you observe wherein you know you feel that you need therapy so 
when it comes to attachment there are a lot of therapies that are being used so i'm just giving you a brief overview of what all you know therapies are being used so ex uh, experiential therapy is being used it's all about action this type of you know treatment uses role play art and other activities to deepen the patient's uh, understanding of underlying issues that are provoking specific to you know the attachment related behavior then there is gestalt therapy that is being used that's also type of you know experiential type of therapy wherein you know it's an exciting approach for dealing with adult uh, attachment issues in specific so here the you know this type of therapy aims to help the uh, client or the patient recognize their responsibility in everyday interactions by focusing on why their behavior triggered specific uh, events cognitive therapy which works upon the feelings the behavior the thoughts so that's all interrelated what's in the mind so here the therapist will help uh, to you know faulty logic and unwanted behaviors coming to behavioral therapy behavior and cognitive therapy are used together by many therapists so behavior therapy focuses on identifying maladaptive behaviors and using specific techniques to control the unwanted behavior there's another form of therapy which is the holistic therapy which is about not just about the herbal medication or anything like that it's about the holistic the it's a psychotherapy technique which is used to you know overall view overall it's it's a combination of cognitive behavior everything so you know it's a more holistic kind of a therapy wherein you use all the uh, therapies together so wherein the uh, counselor or the you know therapist use a more uh, more broader perspective of their therapy and uses more opportunities this is also uh, holistic therapy is very commonly being used and it's more flexible also so that's why a lot of therapists or psychotherapists counselors they prefer using holistic kind of a therapy wherein they can use some bits from all the therapies and then uh, you know help the client with especially with the attachment issues so some things like some signs that indicate attachment issues uh, that they have problems dealing with conflict use manipulation or hostility to control others exhibit impulsive behaviors and have trouble controlling their emotions have trouble receiving and giving love experience depression or feelings of isolation have problems showing remorse or empathy deny responsibility in conflicts or other situations be argumentative destructive maybe some addictive behaviors feel helplessness hyper vigilant so these are the common signs that you see signs of insecure attachment avoidance of eye contact maybe you can notice by this avoidance of physical contact rejection of touch or attempts uh, at emotional connection frequent uh, you know inconsolable crying so this is also a common sign so what happens in domestic violence counseling so what do you understand by domestic violence coming to you all what do you understand by domestic violence hitting uh, either gender hmm. or physically or mentally abusing each other yes yes anyone else who would want to share their views on domestic violence and how do you think this kind of counseling is helpful do you think is it helpful i'm sure we all are there from different fields maybe some are professionals and some are who are just curious to know about what relationship issues are domestic violence counseling is very important especially nowadays uh yes. post covid during covid and all that uh yes. because it's been very difficult to uh, rent out things and the easiest person to vent it about to was the spouse so i think domestic violence or the children take out the anger of the children or the spouse so uh, i think uh, this has become even more important right now yes yes 
yes absolutely thank you for sharing ma'am anyone else who would want to ये मेरे को बोलना है कि मतलब मैंने तो कभी देखा नहीं डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस क्योंकि मेरे मम्मी पापा तो हमेशा एक दूसरे को बहुत प्यार करते थे तो मैंने कभी जाना ही नहीं कि हस्बैंड वाइफ झगड़ा करते हैं बट मेरी जिससे शादी हुई है मेरा हस्बैंड ये मेरे को बताया नहीं था वो मेरे को आफ्टर मैरिज बताया कि वो बचपन से अपने मम्मी पापा को झगड़ते देख के बड़ा हुआ है तो उससे क्या हुआ ना उसकी वो मेंटल स्थिति है ना स्टेबल नहीं है उसका असर है क्योंकि जो बच्चे अपने माँ बाप को देखते हैं वो उनका माइंड नॉर्मल नहीं हो सकता है और ये अगर मुझे पहले पता था तो मेरे लिए थोड़ा सा अच्छा रहता क्योंकि तो मैं कभी देखी ही नहीं हूँ मम्मी पापा को झगड़ते हुए तो मेरे लिए बहुत डिफरेंट हो गया एक ऐसे इंसान के साथ जो कि ये देख देख के बड़ा हुआ है तो वो वैसा ही उसका माइंड हो जाता है कि ये ऐसा होता है ऐसा कर सकते हैं हस्बैंड वाइफ झगड़ा कर सकते हैं उनमें ये सब नॉर्मल है और मैंने ये देखा ही नहीं तो मुझे ये सब एब नॉर्मल लग रहा था हम्म तो फिर आपने तो, इसको कैसे डील करा मुझे बहुत टाइम लगा वही तो मैं कह रही हूँ कि अगर मुझे ये स्थिति पता होती कि मैं जिसे शादी कर रही हूँ उसलिए वही बता रही हूँ पार्टनर को ये भी बताना चाहिए बिफोर मैरिज की वो बचपन से कैसे मतलब मम्मी पापा को देख के बड़ा हुआ ये नहीं हाइड करना चाहिए यही मेरा है मुझे तो बहुत टाइम लगा मतलब समझ लो सात आठ साल लग गया समझने में सो बट आप क्या थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग दिस वाज सच अ पर्सनल एग्जांपल व्हिच यू शेयर्ड इट फॉर एवरीवन वही मैं आगे भी लोगों को बोलती हूँ अगर कोई भी लड़की या लड़का पहले ये जान ले की वो बचपन में किस माँ बाप के थ्रू मतलब बड़ा हुआ है क्योंकि तो अगर वो ये वायलेंस देखा है तो वो उसको आफ्टर मैरिज अफेक्ट करेगा so, मैंने तो कभी देखा नहीं एक तो मैं जानती ही नहीं थी कि हस्बैंड वाइफ कभी नॉक जॉक होता है कभी क्योंकि मेरे मम्मी पापा तो ऑलवेज लवेबल मेड फॉर इच अदर मेरे पापा तो आज तक मेरी मम्मी पे कभी चिल्लाए भी नहीं है तो मेरे को तो पता ही नहीं ये सब क्या होता है इवन मेरा खुद का भाई वो भी मतलब जब मम्मी पापा को नहीं देखा तो वो अपनी वाइफ से आज तक कभी झगड़ा नहीं किया तो मतलब मैंने तो कभी देखा ही नहीं ये सब और मैं आ गई एक ऐसे घर में जहाँ ये सब विरासत में मिला हुआ है तो सो बट बट आपकी आवाज से हमें बहुत इंस्पिरेशन मिल रही है एंड थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग आप क्या एक दो चीजें शेयर कर सकते हो जिसमें कि आपने क्या आपने एफर्ट्स करे टू यू नो मॉडिफाई एफर्ट ये कि फिर वो है ना उसको ये लगता है कि हस्बैंड कर सकता है अपनी वाइफ पे उसके पास राइट है ऐसे मतलब झगड़ने का वायलेंस करने का मारने पीटने का और गाली भी देने का मतलब वो ऐसे अपने फादर को बच्चे लोग फॉलो करते हैं तो उस लोग को लगता है कि ये कोई गलत नहीं है ऐसा मतलब तो वो अपनी वाइफ के साथ भी ऐसा ही करेंगे लेकिन फिर उनको धीरे धीरे समझ में आने लगा कि ये एक्चुअली खुद नहीं कर रहा है ये इसकी ऐसे ब्रॉटअप है तो उस समय शांत होके उसको हैंडल करो कूल करो तब फिर वो धीरे 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 नॉर्मल में हो यही है इसका यही है या फिर इसको किसी मतलब मेंटल में भी बहुत सारी डिजीज को दूर करने के लिए साइकोलॉजिस्ट के पास जाओ या काउंसलर के पास जाओ बहुत अगर एक्सेस है या फिर कंट्रोल करना होगा वाइफ को क्योंकि उसको फिर समझना होगा कि ये ऐसा सिचुएशन देखा है तो ये करेगा तो उस समय उसके साथ आर्ग्यूमेंट ना करके मेरा कहने का मतलब है कि समझना होगा कि उसकी ऐसी स्थिति क्यों हुई है ना कि उसके साथ क्या हम आज की लड़की है हम तो अब वो करेंगे वो नहीं होगा क्योंकि वो एक्चुअली सफरिंग है वो बचपन से ऐसा देख के बड़ा हुआ है इसलिए वो ऐसा तो आपने एक्सेप्ट करी अपनी सिचुएशन अपने रिलेशनशिप को प्रायोरिटी दी तभी आप जो है रिलेशनशिप सरवाइव कर पा रहे हो बट इट्स नॉट ऑलवेज अबाउट यू नो कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग बट यस डेफिनेटली रिलेशनशिप्स में थोड़े बहुत तो कॉम्प्रोमाइज तो करना पड़ेगा नहीं तो फिर डिवोर्स तो फिर दूसरा भी ऐसा ही मिलेगा आपको हंड्रेड परसेंट तो कोई भी नहीं मिलेगा तो आप कितना शादी तोड़ोगे कितनी शादी तोड़ोगे बिल्कुल सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट द म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग And it's also about, but yes, अगर आपको लग रहा है कि this is not something that you know. अब कोई कोई को होता है कि मेरे लिए अकेला रह सकते हैं तो वो बात अलग है मेरे लिए अकेले रहना difficult था तो फिर मैंने तो adjust कर लिया. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing, ma'am. Thank you. So domestic violence counselling, 
where is it used it's a form of therapy that may be beneficial for survivors of domestic abuse it includes intimate partner violence which is physical violence sexual violence stalking or emotional psychological harm by current or former partners or spouse domestic violence uh, it can also include abusive by other members of the household including parents siblings relatives roommates or anyone for that matter so th this is the statistics that reveal one in four adult women and one in seven adult men in us have experienced intimate partner violence 86 percent of male victims of ip uh, we were assaulted by a male partner so this is the this is how the statistics looks like and especially during covid it has you know increased recognizing signs of abuse so abuse can take many different forms and in every situation is unique however there are some common signs of abuse you may well recognize verbal abuse criticism maybe shouting name calling threatening mocking it could be guilt pressurizing tactics threatening of self-harm or suicide maybe so you know these things taking away your phone or laptop threatening to call uh, the authorities on you lying to friends and family about you putting you down disrespecting you in front of others not listening or responding to uh, you when you talk isolation monitoring or blocking your connection with others stopping you from leaving the house telling you where were you uh, where you can go and where you cannot go so you know these are the common signs of abuse maybe lying to you breaking promises having affairs often blaming you threats it could be physically or verbally threatening you sexual violence physical violence hitting kicking pushing maybe denial making you think you are imagining the abuse saying they can't control their anger appearing uh, charming calm in front of others coming to the psychological impact even so what is the psychological impact of domestic violence first is anxiety this is what is commonly as psychologists as counselors you must be experiencing uh, you will have clients like this so what is the impact anxiety ho jati hai, depression ho jata hai. some have post-traumatic stress disorder some have stress is uh, trust issues problems with sleep they're not able to sleep fear of intimacy maybe some have suicidal thoughts emotional disturbances so these are so what are the therapies that are offered it may be some individual counseling one-to-one -one sessions that are offered support groups these are very very effective so when you will see others also participating you will get to know okay they are also going through the same thing the shared understanding and a sense of universality among a group of peers can promote well-being in ways that for some and cannot be accomplished in you know individual counseling so support groups are very successful especially in this case integrative therapies such as doing yoga meditation mindfulness creative art therapies maybe you could use visual art drama dance painting so all of these are some form of therapies that are being used especially in the case of domestic violence couple therapy so that they they can you know uh, have a safe life ahead helping to overcome post-traumatic stress disorder through empowerment hope this is also another uh, therapy that uh, you know researchers have shown that in 2021 it's it has become successful so it's the upcoming one which is also a form of therapy to empower the survivors who have developed post-traumatic stress disorder strengths and empowerment rise which is a form of therapy that is being developed uh, specifically for people who have experienced intimate partner violence so you know focusing on their strengths and uplifting their confidence that's something that's very very important so what can you see here what does the picture depict it is affecting the child hmm. yes both the couples are arguing 
couples are arguing and what is the what is the entire people. picture look like isn't it a family yeah. conflicts conflicts so it's all about the family conflicts maybe at the end of the day the child is getting affected because of the conflicts going on at home so what are the common family problems financial issues it could be grief it could be substance abuse it could be behavioral issues academic concerns mental health concerns maybe separation divorce blended family adjustment chronic illness maybe one partner is going through something really serious so this is a case study let's discuss the j family brings their daughter amelia 13 in for therapy due to her anger problems in the session with her parents as parents discuss amelia's poor behavior Amelia is by turns withdrawn and sullen then suddenly talkative sarcastic and silly alone with the therapist in the second session she is quiet and sad but more direct and focused the therapist begins family sessions again this time asking that Amelia's younger brother attend as well and concentrating on communication patterns between the members of the family although the parents insist amelia is the reason for their visit with their young son in the session amelia is sweet and attends to him while the parents seem to have little to say to one another and barely make an eye contact so can you observe these small little things that's going on in this therapy the therapist is able to point this out to them privately and soon begins couple therapy with them seeing amelia separately and not discussing her anger with her unless she brings it up which she doesn't after two or three months the family is getting along much better and the parents have identified several areas of their marriage to work on in therapy so you know this is something it started from a teen right but how the family therapy you know how the therapist build it all together so this is how the family therapy works had it been anyone else or you know we would have just thought that okay it's all about you know child's anger problem but yes the entire family is being involved in this and it's not just about the child where is it rooted from so this is another example adult sibling conflict wherein also you know family therapy is used john 47 years old seeks therapy seek help to deal with his conflict and his adult siblings and parents they seem to uh, fight constantly whenever they are together and his parents call him daily to criticize and put me down the therapist takes a history and finds john's family has always functioned somewhat like this and informs john that there isn't anything that the therapist can do to change john's family but she is willing to help john learn how better to deal with his family and emotion john feels john agrees to this and the therapist works with him on communicating self care skills such as eating right relaxation meditation positive internal messages and boundary setting so this is how the entire you know adult siblings and parents are you know working together with the therapist so these are some of the goals that you could use so this was just an example that i thought we can share so what are the various factors that can be attributed to family conflicts first is parental conflict poor communication maybe death of a loved one parent child relationship so where what are the therapies that are being used the therapist helps each members understand their unhelpful behavior and thought patterns and work on improving their current situation then it comes to couple counseling just like in the example the therapist will help you develop skills to better your communication with your partner art based therapy is being used family conflicts impact parents and children in such a way that they start burdening themselves with the guilt they may feel overwhelmed with emotions to talk about individual counseling wherein one to one with children adolescents adult uh, geriatric population 
to you know understand their thought patterns behaviors positive coping and problem solving skills how what can family counseling help with first one is mental health conditions second is behavioral conditions third is disordered eating maybe at times support if your child is experiencing any abuse or uh, bullying or neglect so this is where so if we consider the example of the teen who is pushing boundaries family counseling can help the teenagers and their parents to improve communication understand each other better arrive at mutually agreeable solution on the surface it might appear that the teen is simply rebelling or rebellion sake and this can leave their parents uh, feeling disappointed frustrated or hurt but if the family has a space, safe space in which to speak openly honestly they may discover that the child feels conflicted and misunderstood and is frankly attempting to discover their own identity even if you know those efforts are occasionally in uh, opposition to the boundaries their parents have actually set in for so coming to the relationship counseling we've already discussed this uh, you know prior when we were discussing about healthy relationships so where is it used what emotions can break up separation divorce trigger first one is trauma so break up separation divorce are not to be underestimated they are experienced as trauma and consequently your reactions to them are trauma reactions so you know it depends upon you know you might have mood swings feelings of panic isolating detaching yourself minimizing the event to name a few grief maybe all of you uh, you know have uh, like most of us have lost someone or the other during the covid time so we've always uh, we've all experienced this grief and a lot of you know grief counseling is something that is uh, you know very it's a very popular part of uh, relationship counseling and uh, definitely so if you know maybe just in case you lose uh, your partner or your father or your mother or you know anyone close to you or your grandparents so that's something that you know you need help with and so this is where you know this counseling is being used where the uh, counselor helps one and then confusion so this is separating from someone perhaps on temporary basis stuckness although not a real word this conjures the sense of what common feelings when it comes to relationship when you are stuck roller coaster of emotions you feel anger freedom guilt shame failure joy relief overwhelm separation and divorce tends to come with lawyers you know all of this you may feel a sense of being unable to cope up you are at the breaking point separation and divorce can cause a feeling of powerlessness powerlessness male or female and whether legal services are involved or not so you know you feel that you are powerless anxiety or depression so anxiety or depression can be strong feelings that arise at this point of time questions that you can help your client with moving forward what do you want what feels important for you now moving forward what would you like to change so you know these are some things that you know you can ask your client let's do another activity take out your pens paper put on your videos waiting for everyone to put on their videos are you ready yes yes no maybe i couldn't hear yeah. anyone yes yes okay yes. i can see a lot of excitement now good that's what i was looking for 
All right. So I've just shared my screen. Let's write I am grateful for. Maybe it could be one thing or it could be two things. It could be three or four things. So that's up to you. Whatever comes to your mind, just write. I am grateful for. It could be in any relationship. It could be for your personal self as well. That's up to you. So we are talking about relationships today. So you could, you know, connect that to relationship. Or if you want to tell something about yourself personally, then you definitely you can. Quickly write it down. I'm giving you two minutes of time. Again. And start raising your hands once you are done. Once you are done, start raising your hands. Okay, only two people have written. I could see only two raised hands. How about others? Everyone has slept? Really? Was it so boring? I can see a lot of you having a smile on your face. So I don't think it was that boring that you all have slept. Or you don't want to share, is it? We're all here for a purpose, to learn from each other. So we have to do the activities. There's no choice. And that's for your own self. I'm not getting anything out of that. Good. So I can see more raised hands. Anyone who would want to start sharing things that they are grateful for or maybe one thing that they are grateful I for? I am grateful for my children. I'm grateful for, I'm 56 and I still have both my parents with me. I'm uh, grateful for, even though I have breast cancer, I don't need chemo. That's a very big gratitude Absolutely. thing. And I'm just glad to be alive. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing. I'm grateful for having wonderful and beautiful life. I'm grateful for having good relationship with everyone. And I'm very grateful of God that I, that we all family members and siblings are together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Tanya, I couldn't read. You were showing something. Yes. Uh, I'm grateful for knowing my real self. Great. Great. That's a big thing. Yes. yes. And it's very difficult for uh, everyone to know their real self. Absolutely. But I think we all should be doing these reflective activities so that we know, you know, what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses and what all we can work upon. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, ki, uh, I know my strength and my weakness. So yes. mm, I'm grateful for knowing my real self. Yes, absolutely. That's what that's what I'm giving an explanation to everyone as well. That's great. Anyone else who would want to share? Yes, Shivani, go ahead. I'm grateful for the air I'm breathing, the food I'm eating, the people around me. And I'm grateful to God for making me the way I am and being mentally and physically well. Great, great. Thank you. 
How about others? They're not grateful for anything. I'm grateful for good health and uh, grateful for God given me special life. Okay, okay. Thank you. So it could be for anything. I'm not saying that we are, maybe some people feel that, oh, we do not uh, believe in God or, you know, something. I'm right now, I'm not talking about any particular religion or any particular God. I am just generally asking you anything that you are grateful for. So it's a common question. Maybe the, anything in your life would have happened, you know, something or the other happens where we, you know, express gratitude towards that. So I, this is just a self-reflective activity. Please do participate. How about others? Don't you want to share? You can share in the chat box as well. Okay. So I think that's okay. it. Yes, yes, ma'am. Please speak up. I am very grateful for my daughter because she inspired me to start my workshops. She told me that she will start my workshops. She told me that she will start my workshops. She told me that's great. That's very inspiring. So she has equipped you enough so that you practice kar sako. That's great. I'm, I'm also grateful for my husband. physically mentally or emotionally I'm very grateful for him. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very good, ma'am. Very good. That's good that you are all realizing and you are self-reflecting. That's the most important part because when we are busy, we do not think on these lines. We do not think. Anyone else? I'm also okay. taking um, workshop on magic book, ma'am. Okay. Okay. That sounds interesting. That's great. Yes. That's great. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank all you, the success. Thank you. So a few tips that I thought that, you know, we all could incorporate while, uh, you know, having a healthier relationship. Communication is something that's very, very important. Giving feedback to each other, but in a more constructive way so that, you know, one does not feel uh, offended by anything. Be willing to listen. Don't be dismissive towards your partner's needs. Build a collaborative process of discussion and engagement. Resolve conflicts and don't brush them away. Create good moments and, you know, try and be happy in any form of relationship. So here, time, support, equality, fairness, Trust and honesty with mutual respect is, you know, the whole package of a healthy relationship and wishing you all the very best. And I'm sure this was a good reflective uh, workshop for you all wherein you reflected and you, you know, know about what kind of relationship counselings are there, what kind of, you know, how you as a practitioner, if you are interested, you can enroll in for uh, the counselling course if you're all interested in it. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, that's it for the day. Thank you so much for all the cooperation. And right. I would like to announce that for this webinar, People who attend this complete webinar Thank will you for get a, a very certificate. interesting workshop. Thank you. Let, so, it is just speaking up something. So, let's all listen to it before we, you know, leave. Yes. So, I hope you everyone enjoyed this webinar with ma'am. And so, we do have some counseling program as well in a detailed manner so that you can learn more about counseling process and skills. And also, uh, I would like to tell you that I have put a message in the chat box. Uh, for the certificate and the PPT. 
so you need to fill this google form and our team will get in uh, touch with you with the certificate and the uh, ppt that uh, we used today so i hoping some response on this and if you have any query you can contact us also i am putting the number in case for any further inquiry thank you so much from my thank you ma'am thank you so much everyone bye bye good night have a good week bye bye thank you